Python and Excel are both popular, powerful tools for working with data. If you've ever had to shuffle your data back and forth between these tools, you know how much of a hassle that can be. Now, though, we can use Python directly inside of Excel, eliminating the need to move our data back and forth between tools. In this video, we're going to look at this exciting and powerful new feature of Excel. Let's open a new workbook. Python in Excel allows us to write Python code directly inside of an Excel workbook, leveraging the power of Python for data analysis and visualization without the hassle of moving our data between different sets of tools. If you have a family or personal subscription and are running the current channel, Python in Excel is available in preview. While Python in Excel is in preview, you can add or edit Python formulas with premium compute up to a limit. To gain full access to premium compute, you must enable the preview. You will find all the details from the following Microsoft page. Because this feature is in preview right now, what you see in this course may look a little bit different when you use it. Once the feature is available in your account, a Python item appears in the formulas ribbon. This item contains a few buttons, including one to insert Python into a cell, one to reset the Python environment, one to open the diagnostics panel, and one to change the initialization parameters for the Python environment. That appears over here on the right. I'll close this window for now, though. When the feature is enabled, the Py function also becomes available to use in workbook cells. The Python environment that's used in this feature runs on Microsoft's cloud, meaning that you don't have to deal with installing or configuring Python on your own computer at all. If you're already a Python developer, this also means that your local Python environment stays separate from the one that Excel uses. Because the Python environment runs in the cloud, the same Python environment is available if you open your workbook on a different computer or if you send your Python-enabled Excel workbook to someone else who has Python feature enabled. There's no need to worry that your Python code in Excel will work differently on different systems. The Python environment includes the Python standard library and many popular data science, machine learning, plotting, and text manipulation libraries. Once the Python and Excel feature is available for your account, you can insert a Python cell using the button in the Python section of the formulas ribbon, or by going to a cell and typing equals pi opening parentheses. And the cell will switch to a Python cell. We could also use the keyboard shortcut, Control plus Alt plus Shift plus P to create a Python shell. Notice that the interface changes a little bit. We see a Pi indicator here on the left of the cell. This indicates that this is a Python cell. Within the cell is a multi-line editor where we can write our Python code. I can work inside here or I can click up in the formula bar to use that editor. I can switch back and forth between the cell and the formula bar with Control F2. We can enlarge this bar by clicking on the downward facing arrow on the right side, or we can toggle this larger view with Control Shift U. I'll write a very basic program here. I'll write A equals 3, B equals 4, A plus B. Because this is a multi-line editor and we use the Enter key to add new lines within it, we need to press Control Enter to commit the code to the cell. And when I do that, Excel runs the Python code in the cloud. So we'll see a busy indicator for a moment, and then we'll see the result of that Python program here in the cell. Recall that in my Python cell, I didn't write print A plus B or return A plus B. I just wrote A plus B, and here we see the result. The value we'll see in Excel is the result of evaluating the last line in the Python code in that cell. Kind of like how we would see a value when we run one line of code at a time in the Python REPL. We don't use return to send a value back to Excel. We just get the value of the last line in the cell. 
In our workbook, we can have more than one Python cell. The Python cells are evaluated in row major order. That's from left to right, top to bottom, and they all act as part of the same environment. So we can use one cell to set up imports, for example, and maybe another to set some variables we know we'll use in more than one place later on. And then we can access those items by calling them in later Python cells. I'll create another Python cell here, and I'll define another value. I'll write C equals 7. And then I'll use one of the values from the previous cell. I'll write C divided by B. I'll press Control plus Enter. And there's my result using the value from one Python cell in the next one. If we have Python in more than one worksheet in a workbook, the cells are evaluated in each worksheet left to right, following the tab order we see at the bottom of the screen. This gives us some flexibility in terms of using Python and Excel interchangeably as we work. But we do need to keep in mind how the cells are evaluated as we develop our worksheets and projects. We can't refer to a Python cell that's below or later than the current cell. So we need to think out our evaluation pipeline and arrange out work accordingly. For this reason, you'll likely want to put final plots or results or dashboard type summary items on the last sheet in your workbook or something like that. As an example of the order of evaluation here, I'll create another Python cell above the one that I just created. In there, I'll use the value C that I defined below. Type C plus 2. And I get an error. At the time this cell is being evaluated, the variable I'm trying to use hasn't been defined yet. I'll delete this cell. By default, any time a Python cell is updated or any time a value in an Excel cell that's involved in a Python calculation is updated, that cell and all the other Python cells are also recalculated. But especially in large or complex worksheets or workbooks, this isn't always what we want. In the formulas ribbon in the calculation section under the calculation options, we can change the mode from automatic to one of the options below it to perform a partial or manual calculation. The partial calculation mode will update Excel formulas automatically, but won't update Python or data tables until we tell Excel to calculate. And in manual mode, nothing will update automatically. We'll need to tell Excel to calculate before we see any changes. I'll switch to manual mode here in cell B4, so let's change B equals 5. And we can see how that works. Notice that the value of the cell below it, which uses this value, hasn't changed and it's now stale. What you see for stale values may be slightly different than what's shown here. I can go to the Formulas ribbon and click Calculate Now, or I can press F9 to calculate. And now my value has been updated. That's a small sample, but if you have a large sheet that indicates a lot of computation, this option will keep Excel from wasting time recalculating when it may not need to. I'll switch my calculation mode back to Automatic for this course, but decide for yourself which mode best suits your work. We've spent a little while exploring the Python and Excel feature. Once Python for Excel is available for you, spend some time working with your own data and your own workflows. As a Python developer and an Excel teacher, I'm very excited about this new combination of tools. I hope you are too. Thank you for watching this video all the way to the end, and I'm going to catch you in the next video.